Tonight is a very, very, very special night. We have uh, our district membership director, Scott Hibbert, with us on Zoom. And we're going to be inducting one of our newest elite member, Bill McFarlane. <laughs> and our own Brenda Tate is going to share with us her classification talk today. We're getting used <laughs> to this idea, new I technology. Know, right? Okay, so we'll start with your induction, if you don't mind, and then we'll move on to Brenda's afterward. I'm thrilled to have been asked to join you tonight because it's one of the um, most exciting times of the Rotary year is when we induct a new member. And really, membership is really the lifeblood of our clubs. And new members really help boost our impact around the world. So. Bill McFarland, um, today we're welcoming you as a member of the Woodstock Oxford Rotary. And that's because the members here believe that you have the qualities to live up to Rotary ideals of service and that you're a responsible citizen. You are seen as a fitting ambassador of Rotary in the community and people will judge Rotary by your positive actions. Membership in Rotary is an honor and a privilege involving duties and obligations. Of importance is your faithful engagement and involvement at meetings and projects of the club. And you're encouraged to do makeup meetings when you're absent. And you can do those anywhere around the world at about 38,000 clubs. You're expected to participate in the affairs of the club and contribute your personal resources and your talents for service through Rotary. One receives in proportion to what they put into or give to Rotary, and your dividend will be the joy of having served to help others and make a difference in your community. Rotary is a world of networking and fellowship. It's your opportunity to develop lasting friendships while providing impact and community service. Strive to be a true and active Rotarian because participation in Rotary gives you the chance to make friends while you make a difference. In Rotary, the basis of membership is participation. The joy of membership is fellowship and the object of membership, service. The life of membership is engagement. The honor, privilege and rewards of membership are yours as your president John attaches the pin to you and offers the hand of Rotary Fellowship by congratulating you. And you're a lucky club because you have a past district governor too. <laughs> Congratulations, please join me in welcoming Bill. Uh, it is an honor to have me. I, I look forward to a few years because I'm one of the seniors here, I guess. And uh, I find that this club is everything one would want. Very, very sociable, very friendly, and very, very busy on certain projects. So I hope to be able to contribute where I can when I'm able. So thank you very much. God bless all. Thank you. So I have the certificate. I have some stuff to give you one. Is your certificate? Beautiful. Thank this you. This one you can put in nice cater, like uh -huh. gold cater. Yeah. And this one is your induction to Rotary. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. There is a little bit of information here, okay. and being Rotarian, you will get once a month one of those magazine, Rotary magazine, that tell you exactly what's happening universally when it comes to the yeah. life of Rotary. Enjoy. Well, thank thank you very, very much. Congrats. I treasure this. Thank you, Scott. Thank you very much. We really truly appreciate your time to come by here. It's an honor for us to always have somebody from RI, especially a person like yourself, for sure. Thank, so you. thank you very much for helping us induct our newest member, Bill. Uh, from here, we're going to move on. We are all waiting, and I know you'd say the same thing, so I keep looking up, looking here. I know you said the same thing. Um, we all would uh, looking forward to hear our own Brenda Tate say her classification speech. 
So Brenda, the floors are yours. Enjoy. Okay. And please look at that camera. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, Scott. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm gonna try to make this a little bit fun so it's not too boring. So it's about getting to know Brenda Tate. So who am I? First of all, we're gonna give you just the facts, ma'am. So I was born on November 29th, 1962 at the Galt Hospital, which is now Cambridge Memorial Hospital. When I was just a baby, I got very, very sick and had to go back into the hospital. And a lot of babies at that time were dying and they couldn't figure out what it was. And it turned out, thanks to my doctor, that it was salmonella poisoning in the baby food. So a lot of babies had already passed away but he worked with a team of doctors and they figured it out. So that's what saved me. I was the youngest of three children. I came along 16 years after my sister was born and 14 years after my brother was born. Um, my sister used to get really upset because everybody thought she was my mother. Mm -hmm. And I used to laugh at that because I thought that was kind of funny. Um, my brother, uh, I lost him when he was 40 years old. He had a aneurysm to his heart. So that was a very sudden tragic thing. Uh, my mother was born in Brantford. She was of Irish English descent. She was a lot of fun. My father was born in Newfoundland. And if Lee was here, I would tell him that that's probably the best place to be born. Um, <laughs> and he was actually a landed immigrant when he came here. Confederation hadn't happened yet. So he was actually an immigrant coming to Canada. He worked in Toronto for a lot of years and then came up to Cambridge. Both of my grandfathers uh, died in their 60s. My mother's father was in the First World War. He was mustard gas and was sick his entire life, but he did live to be in his 60s. And my father's dad, uh, he was in his 60s as well. He was a finishing carpenter and he actually worked in the US and then would come back to Newfoundland on, on leave sort of thing. Both of my grandmothers lived to be nine years old. So I kind of hope I follow their path. <laughs> so now we're gonna talk about my education. So the first school I went to was Dickey Settlement Public School from kindergarten to grade three. I was a bit of a teacher's pet. And when I hit Roseville Public School in grade four to five, I very sadly learned that I was no better than anybody else. So, and then I went to Cecil Cornwell Senior Public School from grade six to eight. All these schools closed after I attended them, but I swear it was not my fault. <laughs> was not my fault. I live in Cambridge and there are stories. <laughs> <laughs> shush, shush. <laughs> so for secondary education, I went to Southwood Secondary School. They did try to close that, by the way, but uh, they, they didn't succeed. Um, for grade nine to 13, graduated with a, a secondary school, school honors graduation diploma. Then went to Conestoga College in the business administration program. And of course, I've been ex attending the School of Life from age zero to present day and learning something new every day. Now. That's you? That, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I look pretty good, don't I? <laughs> we love the back view. <laughs> So mar marriage number one was, it lasted seven years, but it was not a good one. Um, my husband was an alcoholic. He was quite verbally abusive. And honestly, I would have thought I was the last person in the world that would let that happen. But it comes on so gradually that you don't even realize it's going on. So it gave me a lot of understanding for women who are being abused. And when people say, you know, they should just leave. Well, it's easy to say, but when you're in the situation, it's not really all that easy. So that's what happened with the first marriage. But then I I showed him this picture before I came to. <laughs> so we've been married for 23 years. Um, his son was 10 when he and I got together. And now he's married with two children. So I have two wonderful grandchildren, a boy and a girl. And we've had a lot of pets through the years, but right now we have two cats who are very entertaining. Yeah, yeah. yeah see so you down the bottom. We're, we're, we covered up the stepson and daughter-in-law there with okay. all these pictures, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of fun with our grandchildren. We really enjoy it. I have to say moving in with a man who had a child after being with a man who was very OCD was a real eye-opener. 
because like they would leave stuff places and I'd have to pick up after them. And I thought it was a little bit of culture shock at first, <laughs> but I would find like a sock and a plant somewhere and you know, all that kind of stuff that boys do. So um, we had, Rick had joint custody with his ex-wife. So his son would spend two weeks with us and then two weeks with her. So we always made sure the teachers were always really happy because we would all go to home teacher nights together and they, they thought that was just wonderful because we wanted to keep some order between the two houses and make yeah. sure everything was the same. So yeah, so they had a, a boy and a girl who are as different as night and day, but both very entertaining. I'm really glad to see them come and I'm glad to see them go home. <laughs> Career history. My first job was at Savage Shoes in Preston. I stocked shelves. I had a lot of shoes, Do you Grace. Know how many I, have? <laughs> I had go go boots and clogs and sandals. <laughs> Every time something would come out, they had this wonderful plan where you could have it taken off your pay. So I would just like find shoes and. See, John, somebody else doesn't have a lot of shoes. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> So from there, um, I went over across the road to their office, worked in the payroll department, and then went to Walker Exhaust in Cambridge, where I worked in the payroll department as well. They went through a major downsizing, and so they were cutting out entire departments, and I was just a, a student coming on. So I left there and went to Pride of Paris, and I don't know if anybody knows what that company is, but it was, a, it was in business for probably 45 years, and they were a drapery and fabric wholesaler. So I was in the order department when I started. We dealt with decorating stores, designers, that type of thing. Probably the favorite job I've ever had. It was, I got to go to IDEX in Toronto. I got flown across the country to go to trade shows. And you got to go to different decorators and designers' homes. It was, it was really a lot of fun. And I ended up, um, I was a sales coordinator there for a while. And then I went out on the road for them. Can, can I ask you something? Yes. Did you, did you by chance work with Jack uh, Borman at Walker Exhaust? I don't remember that name, no. Okay. What department was he in, do you know? HR. Oh, okay. Uh, they had two different HR departments there, actually. Oh, did they? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so. Okay. Um, then I also, in during the time that I worked at Pride of Paris, I also was co-owner of a catering company called Range Recreate Catering. And we were in business for a couple of years, and then I learned that partnerships aren't always the best thing. So that ended and I accidentally fell into insurance. So I started working with London Life uh, as a sales rep. Then I went to State Farm. Then I went to North Blenheim as a sales agent and then into Kitchener to Rice Insurance, which was an insurance broker. And the, the, the job that we'll do for now turned into 18 years. Um, 18 years in the insurance industry. By the time I was done there, it was like working in lost luggage. Nobody was happy, everybody was complaining, and it was just a lot of headaches. So I decided I wanted to get out of insurance, and I gave up my broker's license, and I went to work in Woodstock here at Easyway Cleaning Products. I was working customer service and inside sales, and they had a downsizing of my position, so I left there and got sick of working for crazy people. So this happened. So I opened up the office phantom. It originally started as being sort of a virtual assistant on steroids. And I was able to do uh, sales calls for people, phone calls, cold calling, that sort of thing. And thought that the business would be to help anybody who was in sales. As it turned out, I, it started to get more into a marketing type of a job. And today it's really gone into creating content and helping people develop their business personality. I learned a lot from the people who ran their businesses poorly or who I felt ran their businesses poorly. I think I learned more from them than the people who, who did well. So I really, really, I, I can't say enough how much I think that the personality of your business is critical. People are gonna look for you, whether before they even see you face-to-face, -face, they're gonna look at your website, they're gonna look at your Facebook page, they're gonna look at all that kind of stuff before they'll even call you. So if you wanna have a good, relationship with your customer, then you have to start developing that right from the very beginning. So that's where the office phantom is today, doing that kind of thing. So the services, I create and write content. I can do editing if you have something that you want edited, proofreading, can do all that type of thing. 
write the Rotary Club newsletter once in a while. Yes. <laughs> so the business content that I can do, blogs, Facebook posting, um, create articles for that, LinkedIn articles and posts, website content, press releases, taglines, um, speeches, resumes, marketing materials, business cards, flyers, anything that has to do with the written word or, or marketing for your business. So that's that's the kind of thing I can do. So there was another side of me that loves to write. It's my first love. And my mother had always said, my parents are both gone now, and my mother had always begged me to do something with my writing. So part of the business that I've never really talked about too much, but that in the new year, I'm going to try and, and start marketing a lot better, is your sentiments exactly. It's a diff, a, another side to the business, and it's custom poetry that's written for the person that you're going to give it to. So when John gets in trouble with his wife and he's not sure what to do, we can write a poem about her that is specifically about her. I'm going to be the number one customer. <laughs> <laughs> so that works for wedding invitations, speeches, eulogies, that kind of thing. I know I had a, a gentleman who was the father of a bride and he wasn't comfortable with speeches. So I wrote a poem and he told me all about his daughter. And then he just read the poem at the wedding and that made him more comfortable. It's a really difficult thing to try and get across to people the impact that it has until somebody buys one and gives it to someone because then they get it. They're not expecting that it's going to be so personal. And so it's it's really exciting when I hear it, you know, how excited people were when they got one. So that's the side that that part of it I really love. And I had the amazing experience of writing a poem for Michelle Romano from Dragon's Den. Yes. So she came to uh, the small business center, had what they call a Bridges to Better Business event, and she was the speaker. And so we, I got together with two other businesses, small businesses, um, Big Ass Slabs, who gave us the wood, and uh, a, gra a digital printing company in Tavistock. And he did the, the laser engraving on the wood, and then I wrote the poem. And she said it was probably the most personal gift she's ever got. She really liked it. Actually, uh, Brenda, you may not know this, but we've got a relationship with, uh, is it Lauren Brown from the Curling Club? That's right, yes. That's who did the engraving. On Larry, the, Larry oh, Brown? Larry Brown. Larry Brown, yeah. yeah. He did the engraving on the. Yeah, he did a beautiful so job. They often host us at the, uh, when we go to the Love Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so a, a dragon has one of my poems, so that's kind of exciting. <laughs> so at the end of the year, when I leave, guys, you can do something this <laughs> Is that the second table? Yes. Okay. So I also work at the Small Business Center, and how this came about was, as the office phantom, um, I was talking to the manager of the Small Business Center one day, and there was a program they were starting called Digital Main Street, which was going to clients and letting them know that there was a grant available for increasing your online presence. So I got a contract with them and was working part-time with them. And then they renewed the contract the next year and the next year. And now I'm on full-time hours with them and still running my business, but I'm still on contract. So my hope is that one day I will be an employee and then I can still have my business, but that remains to be seen. There's a lot of crap going on right now. So um, so the first position I have is a small business advisor. I'm actually a small business consultant now, they call it. Um, I worked in the COVID recovery virtual advisor. So what happened was the government got a lot of these small business centers together and they gave them a grant for money to go out and help people recover from COVID, whatever we could do for businesses to help them recover. So we met once every two weeks and we talked about all the struggles everybody was having. Then we went out and saw clients, we came back and we put in a report every month to um, let them know how many people we'd seen and how many people we helped. And we just got an email, actually it ended um, end of September, and we just got an email the other day that we hit all of our targets. So the government was really happy about that. Digital Main Street Administrator and the Digital Squad Leaders. So we have some kids that have worked for, with, for us through the summer, some uh, university students and very, very smart kids. And they were our digital squad. So they were able to help clients as well as me going out and talking to them. And then I do all the administration work in behind. Um, we have a community outreach program called SBC Live. So the object of that is to visit every uh, municipality within the county once every two weeks so that everybody is getting represented equally and we can let the mayors know that we've been to all the small businesses and then if the mayors have any concerns, they come to us and let us know if there's somebody they'd like us to go and see. So we've kind of set that up with them. 
uh, and the market and marketing and social media advisor there. Anybody wanting marketing help or social media help usually gets an appointment with me. And I'm the summer company facilitator. So every summer they have seven students that they have come in, they start a business, and then I work with them every week and they fill out their hours that they've worked on their business. We do training with them, teach them how to run a business. And then at the end of uh, August, beginning of September, they can either keep going with their businesses or close them up. Most of them keep going and then there's a grant that they get for that. So what are my passions? Music is a huge passion of mine. Um, I actually met Rick through his parents who hosted a Friday night jam in Drumbo for 30 years. And it was just any musician could go in and sit down and play. And it was mostly country and blue, bluegrass music. And that's how I met him. And I, uh, he plays uh, mandolin. I can play guitar, banjo, trombone, flute, piano, organ, um, I don't know, a bunch of stuff and really, really enjoy music. So there's the entertainment for our next party. <laughs> Like, I didn't say I didn't say I did it well. I just said I did it. <laughs> hey, I'll one I'll and, and, pick for you. <laughs> and my, my favorite instrument though is a stand-up bass. So we have one of those that have belonged to Rick's dad. And so I play that as well. So writing obviously is a huge, a huge part of my life. Um, I am currently starting to write a book, so we'll see how that goes. Public speaking. So I have a character that I do called Jezebel Pepper, who was on a, a Rogers TV show. We had a, there was a show called Women of Courage, and it would talk about a woman's story. Uh, a girl would be interviewed about her life and the, the, the trials and the challenges and how they overcame it. And at the end, Jezebel, who's a very flamboyant character with big hats and feather boas, would come out and give a little talk. And that was me. And so through that, I actually ended up getting to twice um, be the MC for Yuck Yuck's Night at the Quality Hotel. So that was kind of fun. Um, cooking, I love to cook. I love to read and I love to be out in nature. So some of the volunteer experiences I've had, uh, I've been on the board of directors for uh, Christ Anglican Church in Air, St. John's Anglican Church out in Eastwood, uh, the Air Paris Kinsman Band. I was in the Air Paris Band for probably eight years or so. Uh, we went to Germany, it was wonderful. We had a great time with the band. Uh, for the Insurance Brokers Association of the Waterloo Region, and for Oxford Women in Networking. Uh, I've been on the committee for the International Women's Day event that they have out of the Quality Hotel. Um, been a fundraising volunteer for Power of Hope, which is pajamas for children at Christmas time, and a, a fundraising volunteer for the Team Champ Breast Cancer Awareness for Young Women. And I was also co-host of a Women in Motion annual conference that we started a few years ago and then haven't been able to have since because of COVID, but it will come back. Can, can I just yes. start for a second? You can add one more thing in there fundraising for push fry for water. Oh yes, I can do that, can't I? Yes, yes. Yeah. See, that's so new. So this is my passion. Um, this is where I want to go in the future. I had, I don't know how to explain this, but I've always said, I don't really write anything. It kind of comes through. me. It's like I kind of get it and just spit it out. So one day I was at my cousin's house and I got this, thing that said pick up your phone and I picked up my phone and started writing a poem and it was just like coming out of me and I'm like wow look at me go I was it was puking out and after it was done I thought wow I need to share this with the world so I actually um, took the poem had it copyrighted and now I would like to in the future this is where I would love to go I would like to be able to have a course um, workshops for women to help women so the girl um, we once we knew her once when she was very young before the world told her she wasn't enough. She is the woman who has experienced the challenges life has thrown at her and risen above them. She has stumbled, fallen, got back up and carried on. She has learned to love herself and understands that she is a strong, loving person. She has set healthy boundaries, learned how to be kind to herself and become exactly who she wants to be. Age doesn't matter because her journey is always evolving. Some days we are the girl and some days we struggle. The one thing we have in common is that we were always trying to improve ourselves. Together, we can take this journey by sharing our stories and experiences. We can become women who aren't afraid to be straight shooters, savvy in business, or active in our communities, all while spreading positive energy and uplifting each other. 
grow with me and reawaken the power there waiting for you as you become the girl. So that is what I would like to do going forward. I so I thought I would read you the poem since the poem has meant a lot because I actually have a tattoo of the girl on my wrist. So <clears throat> I am the girl who wanted to please. I am the girl who loved to climb trees. I am the girl who didn't fit in. I am the girl who never was thin. I am the girl who seemed to be tough, but I am the girl who was never enough. Yet I am the girl who grew up to see that I am the girl that truly loves me. I am the girl who's grown up strong. I am the girl who knows right from wrong. And I am the girl who now understands that I am the girl who can meet life's demands. For I am the girl whose heart's full of love and I am the girl who gets strength from above. So I am the girl who's going to be fine. And I am the girl who age like fine wine. For I am the girl who's not second rate. And I am the girl who's in charge of my fate. So I am the girl you better treat well. For I am the girl who's been through enough hell. Yes, I am the girl you'll love and admire. And I am the girl you will surely desire. For I am the girl with the light in her eyes. And I am the girl who is patient and wise. So I am the girl that is worth it, you see. Yes, I am the girl. Now come and get me. Wow. Did you put that on the dating site? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's it. So I don't know if anybody heard any questions. Yes. Okay, so back to the phantom. How long have you been in the business? Since 2017. Yes. Going back in the memory, you said you had rain tree. You call your business rain tree, the cat in the Yes. Where did this name came from and why rain tree? Um, we picked rain tree because we wanted something that was that seemed green and eco like ecology friendly. So we thought about the rainforest. So that's kind of how we came up with it as rain tree. When you shared with us that you were in the insurance business for almost 20 years of your life, yeah, were you like a uh, mutual fund salesperson or were you like the car and house? So I did home and auto. I didn't do um, mutual funds, but I did. Um, they had other kinds of funds that we could sell. You had to have a special mutual fund license, and I wasn't really excited about that. So it was mostly um, home and auto and a little bit of commercial and life in the beginning, which was a really tough sell because you had to sell you had to sell them on the fact that they needed it first and then you had to sell it. So at least home and auto insurance, everybody has to have it. So yeah, yeah that was a lot easier. Your, your poem was absolutely beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. Um, can, can I um, suggest that maybe in another year or when, when the time is right to, um, Write a poem about you as a Rotarian. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, that could be dangerous, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think with all of your skills and varied experiences, I think you you are you will be the Rotarian too. So, oh, yeah, that would be fun too. And, and yeah. you know what? Get it published. I send it to uh, Rotary Magazine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 This one. yeah, the girl. The girl. Yeah. On behalf of the group here, a uh, small but mighty group, Brenda, thank you so much for such an interesting and fun-filled uh, presentation. I know you said at the start you were going to try and make it fun. You most certainly did. And I knew a bit about you, uh, but I certainly didn't know all of uh, that information about you. And I got thinking, my goodness, I should have had you create an image for my business years ago. <laughs> because, uh, there's a lot of days when it's not fun when the bank manager's knocking on your door. So uh, anything you could do to flower up the financial statement would also be a joke. <laughs> but oh, thank you so much for going to all that extra effort on our behalf. And uh, hopefully we'd be able to share the recording of that with uh, some of your other Rotary friends. And um, uh, thank you just so much. For, and uh, also thank you for what you're already doing for Rotary and our club. You've pitched in with three hands almost. <laughs> and uh, uh, John has already alluded to the fish fry. Thank you so much for shoring up that. As we know, uh, we had a lot of challenges in that uh, with the COVID and all the other mm -hmm. arrangements. But you you hung in there and uh, helped the other members of the team to bring it through to a great success. So thank you, thank you for all that you're doing and uh, that you hopefully will do. 
And Peter knows I cook a mean hot dog, right? <laughs> uh, can I just ask a question? Uh, we're still playing around with this hybrid type of meeting. Can you hear the audio okay? And I can. Cool? I can. It seems to be do it working well. Okay. Okay. Very so, good. so you can you can hear us in the room too. Scott. I can hear you in the room. Yeah, I can hear the conversation. Okay, well, that's awesome. great. So I'm just going to put everybody what's happening for the next little while in our club, okay? So October 27, that will be next Wednesday evening. Wednesday night is Rotary night. We have a pre the presentation from Australia Bushfire. And that's going to take effect on Zoom. So we can do it in our own house, guys. So we can, we can enjoy it from our own house. We will sign in on Zoom and we can see it. November 3rd, so that will be next the week after next week, the first week of November, we have board meeting plus club assembly. Now the November part was ahead of the game and they already made their assembly and they told us what's gonna happen in the month of November, which thank you to Peter and November part. Uh, so instead of the club assembly, I have an open offer from Sandia from our district, uh, uh, from our Rotary district that she can come by. Thank you. She's our district government elect leader, right? Thank you. And she can come by and then she can do a small speech on, for us. And what I would like to uh, cash in on that offer, I'd like to get her to tell us how we can become more involved as a Rotary. So when we are on the board or as a membership, what's our obligation, what it is to become a Rotary member and how we can be involved as a Rotary. That's November 3rd. November 10th, we have our uh, Rotary Foundation Chair, Leslie Barmania, will come by and she's going to give us uh, a, a speech. And okay, November 17, that we will be away. We are taking a tour on a medical. Uh, if I say it, if I say it in, uh, in the Cuban language, Maraguana, but however, in uh, Maraguana, thank you. But however, in English, it's marijuana plant. Now they told me no samples. <laughs> yeah. So that was the sad part. So we're gonna tour that the Can thing. Get some beliefs then? <laughs> I ask. So we're gonna tour your we're gonna tour your plant. At least we can have like one one puff. Yeah. I said no. Okay. Uh, November 24. This is a very important date for our club. That's our annual general meeting. What's annual general meeting for people who are want to ask that question. So before you ask, annual general meeting, this is when the, our treasurer, which is me, you. And, uh, and <laughs> uh, he will give us an idea, what are we standing financially wise? What did we do with our money last year? How much money we were able to raise and how much money of that money we raised, we spent toward good causes. Number two, we have the floor will be open for nominations and we are in lookup right now for president-elect, which will become our president for next year as of July, 2022. The treasurer, it's a yearly chair. So we are looking for a new treasurer or we can get our own treasurer re-elected again. Uh, our secretary, she's been doing it for three years and she like to have a year off. Uh, so we are looking for the secretary chair and we are looking for two board members chair, okay? And to just a uh, little bit put more heat on it, at the present, actually, we are looking for a board member. Now, remember, if you like to step up, please remember you are not alone in here. There is, even though I would, I would like to take a break, and I think Madam Secretary would want to take a break, but neither one of us, we will be absentee people. So if we want a co-president or we want a president and then there is somebody that is sidekick in here, I'd be more than happy to be the sidekick. And I believe the same thing applies to Linda. She'd be more than happy to be the secretary's sidekick if she needs to. So November 24, our annual meeting, guys. President Lack, treasurer, secretary, two board members. So we need to nominate those ones, okay? So think about it. If you need to nominate somebody, please give them a call and tell them, listen, I'd like you to become the president of this club. Would you be considering that? So from here, 
I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say we're gonna do the 50 50. Sergeant, we're gonna have the happy back. Happy back. back, okay. Happy back, it is. So, yeah, since I have the ball, I'm gonna put my happy back first. Okay, so today is a very happy tip for me, but because my lovey dovey, he's always very sweet, but he always surprises me. And today I had another surprise. That I didn't notice that until I woke up that there was a very nice card under my pillow. Sometimes he would put some chocolates, sometimes he would put some hard sprinkles, like you know, those liquid hard, and he's like that. That's a part of Doug you don't know, he's very sweet. Oh, no, I have happy oh, I've got a happy back for her understanding that I'm a sweet guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the happy box. That's, that's awesome. I'm Peter. I have a happy buck. I have no uh, small change because of it cold, but we don't get any change yeah, in the pockets. Yeah, I know. That's okay. That's okay. That's, yeah, I haven't given any happy bucks in a long time. So happy buck that we can be together here and uh, happy to hear Brenda's uh, uh, yeah, classification talk, and happy to be with Bill here to become a new member. So I just, uh, I've had a good meal. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else have a talk? Sure. Well, I'm really happy that we're meeting for real. This is so nice, and so happy to hear Brenda's classification talk. Oh, thank and, you. Oh, uh, you're so this generous. Is, this yeah. is just um, Love it. Yeah. It's wonderful. I'm happy to stumble for my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying attention to it. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. And yes, Bill. Oh, happy to be a nice new member. <laughs> Thank it's you and well. welcome. Yeah. You're having fun yet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Linda, no? Okay. So here's a happy five bucks. So I get to be happy five times right now. Two and a half times are for Brenda. I love your classification speech, Brenda, and I get to know you a little bit more right now. So you wowed me from day one you entered to the club, and oh. now I'm wowed beyond that, <laughs> all right? And another two and a half bucks for my best friend here, my newest best friend here, Bob. Thank you very much for choosing us as uh, your club of choice, I'm number one. It's an honor, thank you. Thank you, and it's an honor to have you too. I hope uh, I can survive long well enough to contribute. Are you all? Age is only a number. Just That's remember true. that. No okay? one knows. That's thank right. you for dressing up tonight. That's yeah. it. Hey, it looks, yes, thank you. That's Here we go. Job. See? <laughs> thank you very much. Linda, do you have a happy yeah. book? Okay. The meal is 15. Uh, send you a uh, transfer 20. Five for my happy book. Uh, five for the happy book. <laughs> so pay the five and you pay me 20. Yeah, okay. she will pay 20, but give me the five now. I need the cash. Being a Rotary president is like you are being married. I know. Like, it costs, I'm doesn't almost it? opening up my wallet. <laughs> What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> okay, do you want to say something okay. for your happy? Yes. Um, I'm happy because Brenda did her qualification and I was wonderful. I was one. And I have my flu shot today. Oh, you get a flu shot. So no have no sense. That's good. That's okay. good. Okay. Yeah, stay we'll, healthy. Let me ask money. And, and then we, all right, thank you very much. All right, so we're good. Thank you so much, everybody, for being so generous tonight. Look, we've got some moolah. I'm telling you. <laughs> we went away from for a year, but we made it up in one we shot. We made it up, yes. This is what they say, small but mighty club. This is what That's true. Club. That's right. Exactly. So we still have uh, 10 minutes that we can uh, mingle up a little bit. Is there anything for the good of Rotary that you anybody would like to share tonight? Um, yes. So. I've heard some people, like um, some of them heard about our trip to the uh, cannabis plant. plant. Yeah, no. And uh, no. we can, how, how is it going to be done? And um, if they could come as well. This, this, this is a chance for them to see the facility. You mean guests? Yes. Yes, yes. they can come with them. Okay. And no need for any protocols or whatever. We Do we have to... Yeah, mask, and do we have to tell them, like, to confirm how many we are coming? Uh, I'll, I'll check. I'll let you know. Okay. All right. That, that's all I need to You just need to be vaccinated. That's right. Oh, yes. Okay. Is there the any security needed? stuff that we need to go through? Uh, yeah. yeah. We get to know those yeah. protocols. Yeah, it's still a month away. And it's your name or time. It's on the 
I'm going to sign off. I'd just like to say thanks very much. It was nice to uh, see everyone. You have a you had a fun fun meeting and congratulations again, Bill and and uh, welcome to Brenda. That was great. Thank you. Thank hey, you, Scott. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for your help, Scott. Have a good evening. Thanks for coming in, Scott. Good night. Thank Bye. you very much.